Hello folks, Shadowbox or Sid the Kid here, and welcome back to another Mellow Monday on Lake. In the last episode, we went on two different dates, one with Angie and Robert, and honestly, they did not go very well. Angie was pretty much just using me to promote her movie store, and Robert seemed like he was daydreaming through the entire date. Also, I think that either me or Frank are in trouble with the post office. I got a kind of an alarming call. I don't know who's in trouble, but we should probably get into it before <laughs> anything happens because I need to find out. All right, let's get started. Okay, so there is a question mark on the map. There's two. So we should probably do those first. I like to get those out of the way because I see them as like emergencies. I'm pretty sure I just went. Ooh, it's in here. I was gonna say I'm pretty sure I just went in a circle, but I think it's tucked away in in here. Oh, this is the the camp. They said that there was an envelope for a campsite that didn't have a clear address. I remember address. Dad telling me, Meredith, the picnic area is for the older kids. I think I was 17 when I had my first actual picnic here. Hello there. Hey, how are you? I may have mail for you. Is it addressed to Mickey or June? Or both? Uh, to both. Here you go. Sweet brother Damien, savior in the hour of darkness. Never mind him. He's a bit stressed out. We were a bit low on paper. Nice to meet you. What's your name? I'm Meredith. Nice to meet you too. Woo! What? <laughs> what kind of paper? Probably a bit of cash and some rolling paper. Ah. That kind of paper. <laughs> no harm in that. Amen, sister. Thanks for the delivery. You're welcome. Um... So, are you guys on vacation? Sort of. Although, I guess you need a job for a vacation. Joan! Can you get in here, please? Now! Oh, that's my cue. It was nice meeting you, sweet Meredith. Can you, like, not tell the authorities your whole life story? <laughs> I don't necessarily think that I'm the authorities, but all right. There's one envelope that's kind of, like, tucked away. I'm trying to get to it. Is it Robert? Oh, no, it's just this little house. I was gonna say, I think Robert's a little closer than out here. Hmm. These look like bills. She put it on top of the mailbox. And it didn't look like bills, it looked like a postcard. Very critical this morning. <gasps> and a bad driver, apparently. That is probably the smoothest I've ever gone through that tunnel before. Hey, Robert. Are we in our awkward phase now? Hi, Robert. Here's the mail. Thanks, Meredith. And, um, sorry for leaving all of a sudden yesterday. Uh, no problem. Leaking roofs don't fix themselves. Well, it was just... I needed some space. I think I've gotten a bit too used to being on my own. Uh, yeah. Was I such bad company? No, no, not at all. I, I really enjoyed it. I just don't want you to feel weird about it. I was the weirdo. True. There's nothing wrong with a little weirdness. I just wanted you to know that. Anyways, let's see what's in the mail. A dentist appointment. Wait, why am I sharing that with you? Um... So, no news regarding those apartments? Nothing. Hallelujah. This gives me a bit more peace of mind to work on my wild card plan. Wild card plan? Wild card plan. Yes. Also, highly confidential. Wow. Oh, come on. 
I won't tell a soul. Yeah, but no. Maybe later. It's still work in progress. Okay. I Good helped you, that. and you won't Thanks. tell me? Rude. Maybe you are the weirdo, Robert. I had hoped that we had something, but... You're getting all weird on me, dude. So there's one more exclamation point. I'm assuming it's Lori? Because I gave her that movie and I'm supposed to pick it back up. Assuming that she watched it last night? But honestly, I don't know. Maybe it's not Lori. Ooh, I need to pay attention. I keep looking at the map to make sure I'm going the right direction instead of actually watching what's on the road. Okay. Ooh. One of these days I'm going to learn how to drive. One of these days. Hey, Lori. Did you watch The Love Bug? Hey, Miss W. Yes, I did, and I guess I liked it. Sweet. Good enough for me. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. See? Ancient isn't all bad. You still ready for Sunday? I have never been more ready. It's going to be rad. Oh, God. Yeah, totally tubular, right? Uh, sure, Miss W. See you Sunday. I wanted her to say that. I want- I don't care. I wanted her to say that so bad. So it looks like one more exclamation point, and I'm assuming it's Mr. Mackey. I have to drop off movies at his place now? But I guess since he's kind of out of the way, we can do some of these other packages and stuff. Is it this house? Oh my god! <laughs> Look at the way I parked the van! <laughs> Oi. Well, no one saw that, right? Only me? Right? Nope. No answer. Cool with me. I don't want you to see how I parked this. <laughs> I'm gonna sneak out of here before anyone says anything. Oh, right, we have to take pictures too. I forgot about that. Ooh. I want to take one of my house. Hold on. Maybe that's a little weird if they're gonna develop this and just see my house. Uh uh. And I kind of want an aesthetic one of this tire swing. I think this is a good enough distance. Oh, that looks like a Hallmark card or something. Very minimal. Just throw some text on there and you're great. Okay, so we have a few more pictures to take. And then we can get them developed for Nancy. I wonder if I can like take pictures of people you know like in animal crossing will they like react and stuff oh the question the exclamation point is not mr mackey it's someone else weird what's up friend enjoying a nice walk all right at least he didn't disappear like five people disappear on me. There's one at the- oh, I have to drop it off at Angie's place. Right, okay. Well, let's stop over there and drop it off. Maybe she'll give me another one for Mr. Mackey. I don't know. Hey, boo. Hi, Angie. Oh, hey. So, hey, I dropped off and picked up those movies. Right, right. What is going on? Is everything okay? You don't seem your usual peppy self. You don't know me, Meredith, okay? This can be a stressful job. Uh. Oh, easy there. 
I just did you a favor, remember? Yeah, uh, actually, now's not a great time. There's two more movies on the counter. If you could deliver those, that'd be peachy. Hmm. Jaws and the Dirty Dozen. I'm on it. Don't you worry your pretty little head about it. Mm-hmm. Great. Thanks. Appreciate it. Bye. Okay. Rude. What is everyone's deal? Robert's being a weirdo. Now Angie? You know, maybe they watch the video where I say I went on two dates in a row. Not to plug my own video, but you know, I just plugged my own video. Oh, there we go. Another person went poof. Okay. Alright, there's an envelope over here. I'm assuming at a house down in this direction. Yeah. So I guess I don't have a lot going on on my Saturday night. I'm meeting with Lori tomorrow. And then other than that, nothing's really going on. I'm not going out with anyone or... Kind of a lame Saturday night. Is that Mr. Mackey sitting down there? Oh, he's on the boat. I don't really know how I'm supposed to talk to him from here. Do I just, like, yell? I got you some stuff! Mr. Mackey, I've got this movie box for you. Leave it on the porch of the cabin, could ya? I need to know if you prefer a war movie or a shark movie. Huh? Movies? Uh, just pick something. I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, see, I've seen Jaws, and I feel like he would enjoy it, but I also feel like he might get freaked out as he's on a boat right now. And I've never seen the, the Dirty Dozen, so... All right. Jaws it is. Have a nice day. Okay, well, I'm going to take this opportunity to take a little picture of the boat. No, oh, that's not a good view. Hold on. There we go. That's a better view. Smile! Alright, that's 5 out of 12. I really hope that there isn't a deadline, because I have not been taking as many photos as I should. Alright, well, let's head back. See if Frank is doing okay? I think everyone's just in a mood today. I don't know what it is. Is there something in the water or something? Saturday evening. Hey, Em, it's me, Kay. <laughs> wow, I just, like, instantly dialed your parents' number. Superpowers! <laughs> Probably just muscle memory or something like that, right? Or... Maybe it's like that thing where you smell something and it instantly triggers this mega old memory you didn't even know you had. You know what I mean? Oh man, I had that once when Barry bought me lilacs and the smell instantly mentally teleported me to when I was like six years old and fell out of a tree. And I ended up with all this lilac smelling tree gunk all over my face. You remember that, right? What if it's like that with old phone numbers? You go, must dial M, and then your brain just triggers your fingers to dial? Man. Anyway, I uh, didn't call about that, obviously. I was thinking of maybe taking a stroll around the lake this Sunday, clear my head, and then Maureen suggested maybe you'd like to tag along. Not that I'm asking because of Maureen, of course. Just thought it might be fun to check out the old hangouts and the lake sites and all. If you do want to join, I'll be at the watchtower overlooking the lake at 11 a.m. Sunday. I'll probably hang around a bit, so I'll see you when I see you. Sunday morning watchtower. Be there or be square. Oh, she is so cute. Of course I'm meeting Kay. Oh, she the got Countess all nervous. And the Carpenter. Chapter 3. All right. Come in were the most regretted words Cecilia had uttered in a long time. They were instantly followed up by, Get out! When she saw the surprised face of the Carpenter's apprentice, instead of her niece, Anna. Apparently, her hosts wasted no time in addressing the problem of a malfunctioning bathroom faucet. These chapters have been so all over the place that I have not been able to keep up with it whatsoever. So I have no idea what's going on in this book. What?
I almost forgot how relaxed life is here. There is so much space. And people just start conversations with you, as if they don't have to be somewhere else. Which is probably true. So far, I delivered quite a few packages and letters, home movies, and even a living creature. I wonder what next week will bring. Oh, is it like an end of the week wrap up? But not before ending this week with two meetings with friends. An old one and a very new one. Should be interesting. Hey, Em! Em! Up here! Hiya! Should I just come up? Come on up! You just have to watch your step on the third ledge. Should be good. I bet, uh huh? I completely got what you just said, and I'm coming up. Phew. I'm up. In one piece. It's all good. Call off the dogs. Ugh. <laughs> So glad you made it. Isn't it nice up here? I wish I could take a picture of this. This is so cute. <sighs> Brings back memories, doesn't it? Any memory in particular you're thinking of? Those times we took some pie up from the diner after school and <laughs> sat here talking about whatever we felt like. Oh, yeah. How about that afternoon I snuck in some beers from Uncle Stan? And they were really disgusting, and you puked all over the rail? In fact, wasn't it kind of where you're standing right now? Oh my gosh, it totally was. <laughs> Hold up. I seem to remember it was closer to where you were standing. Like exactly where your hands are now. Oh! oh. <laughs> I'm glad you're back. I kind of missed having you around. I feel the same way. So, what's life been like for you since you left? Positives? Negatives? You know, I went to university, got a job. And maybe now it's time for something different. Is it now? Providence Oaks different enough for you? Well, maybe it is, and maybe it isn't. Ooh, that sounds juicy. Is this about something or someone? That's for me to know and me to find out. Ooh, there she goes with the crazy eyes. M still stands for mind your own beeswax, I see. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm backing off. What about you? Did you end up going to college? Yeah, uh, about that. I mean, I wanted to go to art school, yes, but turns out I wasn't good enough, or at least that's what they told me when I applied. So I decided to stay and do my own thing, make music, perform and stuff, you know. I picked up some shifts at the diner, Barry and I reconnected, got married, and then Max came along. You haven't met him yet, have you? He turns 13 in a few months. Time flies. Anyway, having Max gave things a different rhythm, but I still continued with my music. Even managed to get a bit of a buzz going in Portland. Lined up a few interesting gigs. Tough to balance, but fun. That sounds exciting. Yeah, just like that, Uncle Stan got sick. Hit him and Aunt Mo like a ton of bricks. It was crushing. There I was, just about to get somewhere with my music. But I just couldn't let them down, so I stayed. Helped out nursing Uncle Stan, picked up his shifts at the diner. I can't imagine what it must have been like to make that choice. I see where you're going, but honestly, I count myself lucky in a way. It gave me time to assess. Sounds like you really stepped up. Well, in hindsight, it was a lot. In the moment, though, you don't stop to think. You just do it. Where was Barry in all this? Barry was actually really great. We divided tasks back at the house, and he took care of Uncle Stan when he could. No questions asked. He was just there. And what now? Well, Mo has offered a couple of times to put my name above the door at the diner. Up until now, it felt like too much. Too soon. Too definitive. But 
I don't know. Maybe if she asks again, I'll think about it. The way things ended up, it may not have been part of my master plan, but I got to spend some of the most precious moments of my life with the most precious people I know. Got to say goodbye to Uncle Stan and be there for Mo. He basically raised me. I'm grateful I got to do that for them. And I built a family of my own, right here in good old P.O. And one day, those kids will hurl all over this rail, just like we did. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it's been tough, but looking back, I wouldn't trade any of it for the world. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. This is so pure and sincere. Oh, that's so great, Kay. I'm glad at least one of us grew up to be a well-rounded individual. Is there a manual I can borrow? Well, after you left, I had to raise myself, didn't I? <sighs> So, ready to descend to the world below? Yeah, seems like it's time. Come on, then. So I do have Sundays off. <laughs> oh, that was so sweet. Oh. Hello? You're speaking to Monster Deal Central. How may I help you? Oh. Hi, Steve. Meredith, please tell me to calm down. We are so close to a deal. Add it 87 in shops all across America. M -m 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 monster deal. Calm down, Steve. Okay, okay. I met up with this big retailer, right? They read our great pitch. They loved it, and they want to buy 250,000 copies of Add it 87. 250,000. Multiply that by, like, 35 bucks. <sighs> That's a lot. But it's not a done deal yet, right? Not yet, but, oh, oh, so close. I can almost taste it. Listen, I've got the contract right here. I'm sending over a copy. You should have it tomorrow. Please, please, check, check, double check, check it right away. I want your blessings before I sign on the dotted line, okay? I'll see what I can do, Steve. Awesome. I'll be in touch again this evening. I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. He annoys me so much. Just leave me alone. I want to be on vacation. It's official. I hate horror movies. A Nightmare on Elm Street is radical. It was amazing. Thank you for watching with me, Miss W. Uh, You're welcome. I'm never going to sleep again. Ha! Huh. Maybe you shouldn't have watched the movie. Man, I wish my parents would let me watch these movies. I can't wait until I move out. Move out? Aren't you 15 years old or something? Almost 16, and yeah. Don't get me wrong, I love tinkering and I love working in my father's shop, but it's just so boring sometimes. I want to see more of the world. I want to meet more people. I'm sure you've noticed, but there's not many teenagers here in Providence Elks. And I'm homeschooled, so I don't have many friends to hang out with either. But what do you want to do after school then? I don't know. My parents want me to work in Dad's shop, but I don't think I want that. And you left when you were younger, so I figured maybe you had some advice for me? Oh, well, maybe. I think... I always say give school a chance. You never know until you try, you know. You should really give school a chance. There are quite a few universities that will let you tinker on things way bigger than just cars. That sounds amazing. But a homeschooler like me? Sure they would. And you know what? I'll help you once the time comes to apply. But you'd still have to study really hard. I can do that. Thank you so much, Meredith. For talking to me and stuff. You're very welcome, Lori. I had a lot of fun tonight. <laughs> me too. I should get home soon. Later, Meredith. Later. Oh, so many pure conversations. And back to work. Arr, the Sunday oh, goes by so parcel. fast. And another note from Tess. Hey, Em, here are Steve's contracts. I bet you're in the mood for some light reading. And now without sarcasm, really. I must admit the energy here is contagious. 
Is Paddock actually going to take off? See you soon. Tess. Good morning, Miss Weiss. Uh, good morning, sir. I didn't see you there. The name's Walter Morgan. I'm with the Postal Service. I left you a message on your answering machine earlier this week. Yeah. Ah, oh, yes, I remember. Miss Weiss, if you could follow me into the office, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Uh, <laughs> what? Are you familiar with the Postal Service policies? Um, yes, well, the gist of it. Can you remember the segment from Chapter 11, Section 3, first paragraph? No. I'm sorry, that part seems to have slipped my mind. It says in Chapter 11, Section 3, first paragraph, and I'll paraphrase, it is forbidden to use Postal Service property for personal gain. Uh... Oh, okay, sounds reasonable. Miss Weiss, I'm aware that you've only just begun working here. Yeah. But I trust that you do not take the responsibilities of a postal worker lightly. No, of course. I mean, uh, yes, sir. The Postal Service puts its employees under the highest level of scrutiny. I advise you to answer the following three questions truthfully. Oh, Lord. Yes or no will suffice. Okay. Do you know Frank Coleman? Yes. Yes? Have you ever given him envelopes or received envelopes from him that weren't postmarked? Yes. I believe so, the guy at the farm. Are you aware that Frank Coleman wages bets on baseball games? Yes. That will be all. Thank you for your cooperation. Yeah, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen to Frank? I'm sorry. We can't discuss personnel matters. Good luck with the mail today, Miss Weiss. <laughs> you can't just dump that on me on a Monday morning and expect me to go back to work? What the hell? Top of the morning, P.O. Complaints in Monday mornings. The perfect combo. P.O. Positive or touchy? Take it away, Bert. Morning, Jr. I'm afraid it's a pet peeve from me again. People who come camping here outside the season just bugger off already. <laughs> Loud and clear, okay. Bert. Just like today's weather. We're starting the week sunny, but a few clouds will appear closer to the afternoon. That was intense there, Bert. I have like a lot on my mind now that that guy came to talk to me about Frank. I said yes to all the questions because I'm pretty sure some of the like choices that I've made in conversations haven't really brought up Frank so the guy at the farm gave him an envelope and there was a option to say can I see your postal stamp or something and I chose the other one so I'm assuming that he didn't have a postage stamp and then one of the conversations you have with Frank you have to ask him about what's in the envelopes and he says it's stamps, but like you can ask him if like betting through postal services is illegal or something along those lines. And I did not choose to. It Whoa! Rude. Anyway, I chose the other option. <laughs> and I guess both of them are kind of leading towards Frank is doing stuff illegally. I first thought it was me that was in trouble because of the stuff with Angie, but I guess not. We need to pick up those movies from Mr. Mackey. So I'm assuming I can... <gasps> that was a fox! <laughs> I'm assuming we can just go pick that up right now. And he's not on his boat anymore, which is kind of nice, but that also means he's farther away and it's more for me to speed walk, because I can't sprint. Hi there, Meredith. I suppose you've come to pick up that VCR thing you dropped off earlier. The movie box? Yes. Did you watch it? Yeah, I did, I did. Took some figuring out how to hook it up to my old TV set, but I got it to work. Good watch. Shark looked a bit fake, though. Glad you liked it. Not my cup of tea, to be honest. 
So anyway, Angie over at the Flick Shack hopes this entices you to visit. Yeah, I thought so. Maybe I'll drop in one day. Well, you gotta get back to work. Hey, here's the package. Thanks. See you around. Maybe I picked the wrong movie. He doesn't seem that interested in going back to the Flick Shack. And now that's another reason for Angie to be mad at me. Cause I don't... <laughs> I don't know what I did to her yesterday. I people, man, I'm just trying to be nice. I'm doing all these favors. I'm doing everything that everyone wants. I haven't been rude to anyone. And this is the crap I get. So I quickly want to take a picture of this maze <laughs> poster. Because that is so darn funny. Oh, they only- they have Ludo in there too. And Hoggle. Where everything seems thinkable and nothing is what you think. Yeah, that sounds like that. And then this one too. Okay, now to grab that package. Wait, huh? What is that? <gasps> Missing cat! No! I should take a picture of this too, so if it gets developed and anyone sees the cat. Has anyone seen Miss Rogers? She's a British black and white short hair and loves to eat Pop Tarts. If you found him, please call Jolene. I'll take that picture just in case. Oh, please don't bite me in the butt this time. Hey, here's your movie box back. Oh, thanks so much, babe. Listen, I owe you an apology. Mm-hmm. Apology? For what? I was Kurt. Just plain Kurt. And here you are delivering movies for me. You deserve better. It's okay. No one can be perked up all the time. So, any idea what caused it? Business is slow. More than slow. I mean, the Flick Shack is in real trouble. That movie box kind of was my last-ditch marketing effort. Nothing's worked so far. I'm sure it'll be fine. Chin up. Anyway, enough whining. Let me make up for my stupid behavior and reward you for your diligent movie fairing, lady. Reward me? Yep. I've got, ta-da, coupons. They're one of the few perks this job has. I get to take myself and a plus one to a free movie of my choice at the new cinema in Astoria. Valid tonight only. Oh. Wow, pretty cool perk. It is, isn't it? So what'll it be, Missy? You in or you out? I'm in. <laughs> I'd love to. I'm in. Great. Pick you up at your place at eight. I know where you live. <laughs> anyway, gotta get back to it. Bye. Bye. I still feel like Angie's gonna murder me. And that just validated it. But I'm glad she's better. I'm about to pass this car. That car wasn't even on the ground. Oh no. It's at the motel. Oh no. Let's see if he'll actually talk to me, talk to me this time. Oh, did I cause a dent? Jeez. Oh my. Just do. Let me guess. He's playing video games again. Yep. Hello, sir. It's the mail. Excuse me. What's this all about? Oh, I thought I'd not bother you and just deliver the parcel. I'd appreciate it if parcels are not just dumped on the counter. Okay, I'll take that into account for next time. 
You'd understand if you had any idea about what I'm trying to do here. Setting up a computer system to handle all the bookings is quite sophisticated. I'm sure. Are you sure you're not just playing a game? Yeah, I'm sure. Thanks for the mail. Bye. Bye. You told me to just put it on the counter last time and ignored me. How was I supposed to know? You know what? And I totally ran over your grass. And I meant to. Suck it. Alright, this last envelope, I believe, is for Robert. So hopefully he'll tell me his super secret plan. And I can help him with it. So we can spend some more time together. <gasps> Let me take a picture. Oh my god, pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty! Pretty! Two more to go! Oh! Sorry! Hey! 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 Stop inching! I'm going! I'm going! I was just taking a photo. Oh no, I think it's at the campsite again. It is! Hey, June. Hi, sweet Meredith. Hi there. Here's the mail. Thanks. Still enjoying life off the grid? Sure am. Although, Mickey had a rough night. Said he had hallucinations of rotten fish in the RV. Did he have too much of the stuff that makes you feel funny? Well, actually, when I went outside this morning, there was this huge rotting lake trout right below our window. Totally grossed me out. How does something like that end up there? Ew, disgusting. W How would I have a suspicion? I may have... Oh, hold on, Mickey's gotta read this. Mickey! Wake up, honey! Leave me alone, I'm still shit-faced. It's a letter from Damien. Oh, right, yeah, okay. Give me that. Looks like we won't be here much longer. Did you grow tired of the lake already? We're going to Canada. We will be picked up this Thursday, early in the morning. Oh, my best friend lives in Canada. Canada? For good? Joan? Are you running your mouth again? I'm sorry, sweet Meredith. Gotta go. Hey, you know what? You should come by Wednesday. Our last night here. We'll build a campfire, have a drink, maybe a puff or two, you know, and talk about the meaning of life, of course. The complete outdoors experience. Uh, uh sure. Oh, cool. Yeah, why not? Joan! Awesome! Gotta run. See you Wednesday after sundown. I really hope it's just June. Mickey can kind of be, uh, what do you call it? A dickweed? <laughs> I'm kind of sad that they're leaving. I literally just met him like two days ago. I went the wrong way. This is probably the worst driving that I've done in any episode so far. I need to stop paying attention to the map and try to learn my surroundings. Oh, is Frank gonna get mad? Does he know that I told? I don't know. Okay, cool. Hello? Hey, Meredith. How was your day at the office? Hi, Dad. Uh, I mean, mail truck. Oh, hey, Dad. Yeah, I should probably tell him, shouldn't I? Actually, it did start at the office. I was being interrogated. Interrogated? What? By whom? Walter Morgan, a higher up from the post service. He started asking questions about code of conduct and about Frank. Oh, Morgan, that walking corpse. He's always after Frank. What did you say? To be honest, 
I told him that Frank had some suspicious things going on. Ah, uh, okay. Don't worry, it's on Frank anyways. But he'll find a way to get out of it. He always does. Listen, Mom's poking me. I guess we're not allowed to talk about work. Uh, here she comes. Bye, Meredith. Hi, Meredith. Was Dad trying to get work stories out of you? Hi, Mom. Yep, he tried. And he succeeded. It was a weird day. Well, I'm changing the subject right now. Okay. Have you met that new guy at the hotel yet? Matt? Yeah, I met him the other day. That's his name? What a jerk. Ugh, I agree. He's one of the reasons why I won't miss working at the hotel. Anyway, how's life in good old P.O.? It's nice. I met some interesting people. That's good to hear. Interesting people. Do you mean interesting, interesting, or just interesting? Uh, I think you could say interesting, interesting. <laughs> oh, honey, that's so nice to hear. It's been a while since you met someone interesting. That's right. And now I'm changing the subject. How are you guys doing over there? No. Oh. Fantastic. I think I might actually want to live here. The warmth of the sun, it's very easy to get used to. No, oh, Dad's telling me to get back. Looks like the bar's open. <laughs> Wonder what he's ordering this time. Margaritas. Oh, Alabama Slammer. <laughs> oh. Alabama what? Alabama Slammers. Cheers. Oh, okay. Bye, Mom and Dad. Oh. We're going. This is fun. It's been ages since I've been to the movies. Well, they call it the movies, plural. But of course, we can only see one movie at a time. So, which one will it be? My pick? All right, let's see. Big Trouble in Little China, Blue Velvet, or The Great Mouse Detective. All right, I'm ready to pick. I believe, and don't quote me on this, my mother's uh, turtle is named after someone in Big Trouble in Little China. So I think I'm going to pick that one. Big Trouble in Little China. Ooh, the carpenter. This ought to be a ride. <laughs> I think so. I honestly don't remember. And it's endlessly quotable. Yes, sir. The check is in the mail. You were right about it being a ride. Woo. Yep, that's Carpenter. And the best part is, we don't have to talk about hidden meanings or anything. Oh dear. Does that mean we have to talk about ourselves? Dun dun dun. <laughs> so anyway, my parents' house is right down this road, as you well know. Right, Missy. Let's go that away. Uh, <laughs> I wish I loved anything half as much as you love movies. Next time, we'll do something in your area of expertise. What, computer software? Yeah, we can build a killer robot or something. I like the sound of next time, by the way. <laughs> Oops, what a slip of the tongue. So, here we are. Now what? Okay, I I'm trying to be nice because I think Angie could be a great friend. I don't think I want to pursue a relationship with her anymore just cuz there are a couple of things that just off put me about her. But I still want to be nice. I'm just afraid that if I say something mean, she's going to get mean. I still want to be friends. Okay. Well, we could have a cup of tea at my place. I would like Duh. No! <laughs> I booped the mic. I'm sorry, but this isn't what I had in mind. Oh, uh, okay, fine. Uh, no, that's fine. I sh I should go. Sorry. See you later, okay? Okay. Good night, babe. Oh no. Meredith, 
Can I bug you for a second? Oh, double no. Ah! <laughs> no. Uh, yes. I wanted to talk to you as well. That Walter Morgan guy, uh, what did he want from you? He was asking all sorts of questions. Also about you, Frank. God damn it. Can you believe that jerk? Are you in trouble, Frank? Trouble? <laughs> They're the ones who are in trouble. I gotta get back to it, Meredith. Have a great day. Oh, before I forget, that Robert Harris guy was here this morning, looking for you. He asked if you could drop by. He's working somewhere in the forest today. You know, I was gonna let end the episode here, but I think that we need to go see Robert after the night that we just had with Angie. Good morning, P.O. P.O. Positive. We're just going. We're going straight there. Will it be a P or a double P? Walter Morgan has the answer. Every now and then, I spend some time in Providence Oaks, and I'm always happy to see this beautiful and orderly village and its well-mannered inhabitants. Did someone just call me well-mannered? <laughs> oh, I'll take it. Let's see if the weather will behave today. A bit of sun to start the day, but mostly overcast heading into the evening. Back to the music. Uh, all right, well, let's just see what... I barely nicked that bush. Bro. Bro! <gasps> Am I stuck? Oh my god. Oh wait, no I'm not. Oh. I just learned I can honk. Oh! Oh, snap! Hi! Hey, Meredith! I'm up here! Hey, Robert! Wow, that's really high! What? I can't hear you! Should I come up as well? Sorry, I can't hear you! Maybe I should come down first. I try to crack a joke with you, dude. Got a nice view of the Can booty. you hear me now? Hi, Meredith. Hey. Hi, Robert. That's better indeed. Thanks for coming out here. This arborist job came up suddenly. Awesome. I'd love to try that sometime. It's great up there. I used to climb a lot. Still do, actually. But now I get paid for it, too. Anyways, I figure it would also be good for you to see where the apartments are planned. No. Ah, okay. So, what now? Well, I want you to listen to my wild card plan. Tell me all about it. I've scheduled a recording session at a professional sound studio. Get out of here. Are we going to do a tree version of We Are the World? Yes, I can do Bruce. <laughs> we are the world. We are the children. <laughs> oh, my God. That sounds great. I'll be... Oh, I don't... I know the song. I don't know the people. Diana Ross. There's a choice we're making. We're saving our own lives. Oh, yes. But no. Sorry. It'll be a radio message <laughs> to get the people of Providence Oaks involved. Oh, okay. Ah, you're such a party pooper. Yep, I also work undercover for the fun police. Uh. It'll be this afternoon, by the way, at Jack Reynolds' barn. Are you in? I could use an extra set of ears. I got you, bro. A professional sound studio, huh? Okay, I'm in. Great. Meet me there after work. I gotta get back up in this tree now. See you later. Bye, Robert. Bye. Be careful up there. Thanks. We are the ones to make a brighter day. <laughs> so let's start giving. He's so cute. Oh my god. That's so loud, bro. Hold up, hold up. We gotta move, we gotta move. I gotta do an outro, Robert, and you're being so loud. Wait, I should take a picture. Hold up. <laughs> I need to take a picture of that glorious booty. Let me get out of the trees first. Oh my god. Oh, that's perfect. Am I being creepy? Yes. 
Okay, now we can move out of the way. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm going to leave this episode here. It was probably one of the most intense episodes of the lake so far, and I'm so excited to see where this ends, whether it has to do with Frank, whatever is going on with Angie, and hopefully progressing our relationship with Robert and that glorious lumberjack booty. I will see you guys next week for another Mellow Monday or another random video on my channel. See you guys later. Oh, Gabe. You changed your dildo head. I am red. <laughs> oh my god! I am tiny red. <laughs> Get the warthog. Get the back, get the back, get the back. Get I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it.